Good morning and welcome to a beautiful sunny morning here in Cumbria. It's just like a summer's morning. It's lovely and warm and the sun is shining bright. So I am thankful to God for another lovely day. And it's wonderful to have our brother Skip with us. And I pray you have a wonderful week away from all those students. And it's good to welcome our dear sister Sue and brother Kaj, who's not been able to log in. And apologies to all our friends on Facebook. We're still not able to go live with morning prayer, but in every situation we give thanks to God. This morning we light our light on day seven of our 40-day novena of prayer for our beautiful Abbey in Montana in America, where the negotiations are coming together slowly. And we want to pray this morning for dear Krista, the owner of the beautiful venture that she established in faith quite a few years ago, and for our dear brother Brian and sister Eleanor, who are a great support to me and the community over there in nurturing and looking at ways how God is leading them. So we light this light this morning to say thank you, God, for your blessings on our community and the Abbey for America. And we also thank you, Lord God, for blessing the proposed Abbey for here in Cumbria and in Finland and for all our brothers and sisters who've joined us, we remember you in prayer. So we begin <clears throat> by ringing our bells for unity and peace. And our Tuesday morning prologue of our brother and sister is scenes of Mount Sinai, we say together, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother, and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy, pure, and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Tuesday morning we commune with the angel of joy, saying, angel of joy, enter my lungs, and give, sorry, I'll say that again. Angel of joy, descend upon earth and give beauty to all beings. We now reflect and feel ourselves absorbing vibrations of joy from the beauties of nature, the colors of sunrise and sunset, the song of a bird and the aroma of flowers. Wow. And our opening prayer is from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. In the beginning, O God, you shaped my soul and set its weave. You formed my body and you gave it breath. Renew me this day in the image of your love. O great God, grant me your light. O great God, grant me your grace. O great God, grant me your joy this day. And let me be made whole in the well of your health. I always look forward to Tuesday prayer because they're always so positive, like the angel of joy. Oh. We need the angel of joy, don't we? Because the world is being swamped with so much fake news and everything is despairing and hopeless. They never seem to give the news with the positive and the negative. It's all gloom and doom. It would be nice for them to conclude the news with some of the good things that are going on on this earth and the good people that there are holding us together. But I guess they don't make news, do they? 
Excuse me, I need to drink. Now, our hymn this morning is from Sing Your Faith, from our Unitarian brothers and sisters. From the crush of wealth and power is the theme of the hymn, and I wish I could sing it, but I daren't. <clears throat> from the crush of wealth and power, something broken in us all waits the spirit silent hour pleading with a poignant call bind all my wounds again even now our hearts are weary of the friend we need so much when i see the pain you carry shall i with a gentle touch bind all your wounds again when our love for one another makes our burdens light to bear Find the sister and the brother hungry for the feast we share. Bind all their wounds again. Every time our spirits languish, terrified to draw too near, may we know each other's anguish and with love that casts out fear, bind all our wounds again. And that's by Kendall L. Or Gibbons born in 1955 from the crush of wealth and power and coming <clears throat> to psalms now from the beautiful reverend leslie brand who's compiled a modern version of most of the old testament psalms and this morning it's psalm 96 and if you have the book it's 152 god is here god is now it is a time for celebration our praises need not be confined to old songs nor need we great organs or massive choirs to honor his name let us create new songs of praise to our god let us discover new ways of proclaiming his greatness and glory the elements about us reflect his majesty, the roaring sea and all that inhabits it, the wind that bends the trees, the creatures that fill the air and land, the mountains that probe the skies, the rivers and lakes that slake our thirst, the great planets and stars that light up our night, all these reveal God's beauty and splendor. And out of this comes that fashioned by man's mind and hand, rockets and computers, art, architecture, music, literature. Wherever one turns, God's power is manifested. God's presence is made apparent. Let us celebrate his presence in our world today. Oh, that is an upbeat, positive psalm. And for me, it resonates with my Franciscan Celtic spirituality because it's combining all the elements with the animals of nature, with brother sun and sister moon. It makes me feel I want to go out and dance in our monastery garden and just celebrate God's love for us because God does love us. Our reading from the little booklet the United Christian broadcasts for this Tuesday morning reads, handling panic attacks, how many of us suffer from panic attacks. It's amazing how many children of God really struggle with fear. The author guides us to read from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 25. Do not be afraid of sudden fear. In the Bible, panic attacks are referred to as sudden fear. You can't breathe your palms sweat, your chest gets tight, 
and you feel weak. If you've ever experienced a panic attack, you'll recognize these symptoms. Doctors estimate that in our stress-filled world, about a third of us experience at least one panic attack a year. If you are one of them, here are some things you can do to help yourself. The first, breathe deeply. Panic attacks, sorry, panic makes you breathe in short, shallow bursts, whereas breathing deeply helps to calm and relax you. So when you start to feel overwhelmed, stop and breathe in the name of Jesus. Try it, it works. And number two, talk to yourself. Say, by God's grace, I can handle this. If you respond with more panic, you'll just end up in double trouble. Allowing yourself to feel panic without reacting to it may sound difficult at first, but it helps you break the cycle and take control of your thinking. And thirdly, do something calming. This may be the last thing you feel like doing because panic attacks make you instinctively think thoughts that feed your fear. So take a minute and whisper a prayer a quote from scripture. Listen to inspirational music like what I'm playing for you now. From the Healing Heart by Patricia Spiro. It's so soothing, isn't it? Let's read on. After all, it's God who gives doctors the skills and abilities to intervene. Here's a scripture you should write down and keep handy. You can go to bed without fear and sleep soundly. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster, for the Lord is your security. Proverbs 3, verses 24 to 26. Let me read that again. You can go to bed without fear and sleep soundly. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster, for the Lord is your security. Wise words. And now I'm guided to pick up this lovely little book, Rumi's Little Book of Life, The Garden of the Soul, the Heart and the Spirit. And I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to choose a reflection for us as I open it at random. Master your vicious ego and judgmental mind, then with clear purpose, silent and alone, you can start on your journey towards spirit. The moon will light the signs on your path and lead you toward the place with no signs. The beautiful names of God you have repeated enough now enter the stage of knowing their essence. No longer a seeker, you have arrived at the threshold of the divine. Now, servant and king, apparent and hidden, you have become silent as spirit. Wow. Lovely words. And coming to the lovely book of peace prayers from all the world's faiths by the great Roger Granger, we open and the theme is restoration and renewal and these form part of our intercessions from psalm 23 verse 2 and 3 excuse me we read he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul from the baha'i faith thy name is healing O my god and remembrance of thee is my remedy Nearness to thee is my hope, and love for thee is my companion. Thy mercy to me is my healing, and my succor both in this world and the world to come. Thou verily 
art the all bountiful, the all knowing, the all wise. And from the Christian tradition, we pray for those who, who work to restore what violence has damaged or replace what it has destroyed. We pray for all who seek to relieve stress, to relieve distress of body, mind or spirit, whether untrained or technically skilled. We pray for courage and determination to discover new ways of serving God within his creation. We pray for the precious ability to learn from past mistakes. We pray for hope springing in hearts and lives bruised by war. All powerful and ever living God, in the midst of conflict and division, we acknowledge it is you who turns our minds to thoughts of peace. Your spirit changes hearts. Enemies begin to speak to one another, and those who were estranged join hands in friendship, and nations seek the way of peace together. This our hope and prayer. And from the world peace flame, we are entering an unparalleled era in history. Never before has there been a global dialogue about the legitimacy or illegitimacy of war, and whether or not we have searched for all possible peaceful solutions. The world peace flame helps us to recall that peace is always possible when we make the effort to stand firmly creatively and with respect for all. Wow. Restoration and renewal. So now we come with your requests and we ask the Good Shepherd to come and join with you as you ask for the fresh outpouring of God's Spirit to bring to your mind any thoughts that are negative, any thoughts that deny you God's love and healing. Maybe it's fear. Maybe there's stress in your life. Maybe there's anxiety, turbulence. Maybe you have never known God's unconditional love as a child. Or maybe you've experienced deep inner trauma, either in childhood or in adulthood. You may be suffering depression. You may be going through the dark night of the soul, which many of us go through on the spiritual path. Let us name, bless, and release to God whatever it is that's holding us back from surrendering our heart to the beloved Lord. So let us use this time to invite, invoke, and call upon the Lord our Good Shepherd inviting him back into your heart and now share with him everything, anything, anyone, everyone that may have caused you deep inner anxiety or unwellness. Let's give it to the Lord in a mindset of gratitude and leave it with the Lord. And just keep saying, thank you, Lord, for setting me free today from all that overwhelms me. Let's do that now.
And we say thank you, Jesus, for laying your healing hand on our mind, on our body, and on our spirit. And now we bring each one of you who've joined us at this hour for morning prayer. We bring our dear sister Sue and her dear friend Kath and Wilf, who's both terminal. For our dear sister Jan and her friend Sonia, who has multiple tumours. Excuse me. For Skip, that he may en truly enjoy this week this week's break from school, college, and have some me time for him and his family. For the brothers and sisters of our community around the world, both past and present. But we bring dear Krista, this beautiful woman given a vision several years ago in the outbacks of Montana, where with God's help built an amazing sacred space. And at 75, she has not given in or given up, but continues to do great things for God. And it's through her kindness and being guided and led by the Spirit of God that she approached me to see if we would be interested in setting up our new Abbey there. And guided in prayer, I said yes. So now Brother Brian is negotiating with Krista on my behalf for a new venture, a pioneering venture for the Franklara Abbey of Peace and Compassion. And we pray for that beautiful vision for America. And we pray it will be given all the support and that many friends will come to rally and support the community. And that those who have youth on their side and skills will be touched by God to go and volunteer their time and services and we say Lord thank you for opening a door in America for your children to come and to sing your praises without fear of being judged or disciplined we say Lord thank you for working with dear dear sister Krista and brother Brian and give them the strength and the wisdom that they need to formulate this trust. We thank you God for Ashton House here in the UK. If it's to be Lord then thy will will be done and for Finland for dear brother Gaj and sister Paula we just say, Lord, show them what you want of them. But we pray for dear Paula, who's struggling at the moment with this irritating cough and feeling unwell. We remember their son, Lucas, who's gone in for this compulsory army training and for their eldest son, Marcus. We pray for all our friends on social media whose prayer we value and give thanks to God for but we want to remember them and there are many requests that are in this book and all the requests we give them to you Lord today too many to mention Jesus but you know them by name so thank you for breathing your breath your healing touch on every heart and every request. We pray for all our religious leaders, for Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch and head of the Anglican Church, both here and worldwide, for our Holy Father, <coughs> excuse me, Pope Francis, 
for His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat Hanh, and for all the men and women who've, of all faiths who've surrendered their heart to God, a God who has many names and none, to reach out to God's children who are suffering and struggling. And we pray, we pray today for peace in this beautiful world. And we pray that the rights and dignity of every child of God, even if they're marginalized, living on the periphery with very little, that their rights be safeguarded and upheld. So we bring all our needs now to God. And we say, bless you, Father, Mother, God, for hearing our prayers today and for protecting your creation from those whose sole intention is to destroy our forests and woodlands and the habitats through greed. We ask your blessing on the animal kingdom. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here at this hour our daily bread. Forgive us our indiscretions for the times we took our eye off the ball and allowed panic attacks and fear to infiltrate our heart. Protect us, dear Lord, from the vitriolic forces of evil and the Antichrist. Lead us not astray, but protect us from those forces of evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer, <coughs> excuse me, is from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. And it's a form of a Celtic blessing. God before me, God behind me, God above me, God beneath me. I on your path, O God, you, O God, on my way. In the twistings of the road, in the currents of the river, be with me by day, be with me by night, be with me by day and by night. And as I blow out this flame, I thank the Lord Christ for laying his healing hand on your heart and granting your requests this morning. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di carita, salam alaikum, and may the peace of our God reign supreme in your hearts, for you were called by name as God's prayer partners for unity and peace in the Cathedral of God. If this is your bedtime, sleep well, and if not, I wish you, oh, a beautiful day. It is here. I pray it is where you are. Till we meet again around this table of love, God bless you and thank you for coming here to pray with me. Thank mm -hmm. you.